I'm Mike O'Malley. Welcome to the Extreme Arena, home of Nickelodeon Guts, the action sports show where kids live out their greatest sports fantasies. Today, our players will be battling their way through four spectacular events, and after that, we'll get a chance at tackling our radical rock, the Agro Crag, where almost anything can happen. The player with the most points at the end of all of our events is the winner, and he or she will be able to take home a glowing piece of our awesome rock. Now, remember, all of our events here on Guts are specifically designed with our players' safety in mind. Our players wear special safety equipment, and we'll have a stunt coordinator and stunt spotters with them at all times, so please do not try this at home. Now, you're crashing the boards with David Robinson, Dennis Robin, and Akeem. No way, you say? Well, in our new elastic event, Rebound, the re is yours. Another elastic sport event here on Guts. Let's go to our referee, Mora Quirk, for the rules. Mo! Hey, Mike. At the sound of my whistle, all three players will jump off the aerial bridge and towards the center post. Each player will get five chances to grab the rebound, and the player with the most rebounds wins. Mike! All right, so our players getting up on top of the elastic bridge. Looks like they are ready to start crashing the boards. Let's start it off, Mo. Players, on your mark, get set. And off of that aerial bridge, and up for the ball, no, who got it? It looks like, in the purple, Tommy Wrongway Murphy. And getting set for our next rebound. Pounding the boards on that one. Let's, let's go to Mo. On your mark, get set. All right, and down, back up, to get the next one. Tommy, again, with another thunderous move. Mo. On your mark, get set. All right, and down, and up they go. And it looks like on that one, Stephanie, taking that back up the aerial bridge. Let's go to Mo to get set for the next one. On your mark, get set. Five rebounds up for grabs, and they're square enough for one more. And it looks like, oh. Tabitha with her hands on it. Mo, ready for the next one. On your mark, get set. All right, let's see if Stephanie can get this one to tie with Tommy. But no, looks like Tommy got that one. Hammering the boards on that one. And right now, Mo will go over the results. She has them. Mo. In first place was Tommy in purple with three rebounds. In second place, Stephanie in blue with one rebound. In third place, Tabitha in red with no rebounds. Basic training. It takes place here in our gym. Our obstacles change every day. So let's take a look at what we've got working here today. we got the cargo climb. Then the Tarzan swing. And then I come down and I go down the slide for life. Barrel out and then elastic jungle. I'm having some trouble here. Go on without me. And then up the wall climb. And then into the free fall air bag. Let's go to Mo for the rules. Mo. Mike, our players will be timed from starting line to free fall. They must complete each obstacle before moving on to the next one. Best time wins. All right, and it looks like Stephanie is ready to go. On your mark, get set. Wearing the bonsai blue, Stephanie coming into this event in second place. She needs a good finish here. And as she gets across the Tarzan swing. Now this event, folks, is providing the speed, the determination, incredible coordination. And then, of course, the arm strength and leg strength that you see Tabitha diving through it. See the light. He's going to have to hustle, folks. He's going to be close. In first place in this event, who's going to take it? And if that's an official time, he is indeed taking over first place. Let's go to Mo and find out what the official time was for Tommy Wrongway Murphy. Mo. Tommy clocked in at 26.8 seconds. That puts Tommy in first place, Tabitha in second place, Stephanie in third place. Surf is up in our next event, folks. It's called Hang 10, and we are going to turn our pool into a raging ocean. We're going body surfing, dudes. Let's talk to Mo about the rules. Mo. Well, Mike, at the sound of my whistle, each player will have 30 seconds to collect as many of the 10 buoys as possible. Players must keep the buoys on their arms, and the player with the most buoys wins. On your mark, get set. All right, so buoys dropping in the water. she got 30 seconds to see how many buoys she can get. And Stephanie going into this event tied with Tabitha. And it is not easy to hold on to that body board. Those waves knocking our players all throughout that ocean. And she's picking up. Looks like she's got about four right now. Time running out. Not easy maneuver his way. So he fell off the body board right there, folks. He really has bust hustle. He's only got four right now. He needs at least four more to hold on to his perfect score. Will he continue to take them? It looks like his fifth one is right there, but he's got two seconds. He's going to have to get five and six. 
Bucks right there, folks. I don't know. We're going to have to go to Mo and check out the results, Mo. Tommy collected five buoys, so that puts Stephanie and Tabitha in first place, Tommy in third place. All right, so both of the ladies. Our next event, which combines all the fury of nature, bringing it right here to the Extreme Arena. It is called Tornado Run. And I'm telling you, folks, this one's going to blow your mind. We have got rivers to cross. An earthquake rocking the ground with full force. Jungle vines to fight through. And then after that, they're going to have to make their way through a swamp fog just waiting to bog our players down. Who's going to survive to the finish first? We'll find out in a moment. But right now, let's go to Mo for the rules. Mo. Well, Mike, at the sound of my whistle, all three players will race around the track. Players must go through or over every obstacle. First player over the finish line wins. On your mark, get set. All right, so all three players at once trying to fight their way through that river. And it looks like Tabitha way out in front, followed by Stephanie. And then Tommy making it through the jungle fight. Tommy's in first place in this event. Tabitha. No, Tabitha's in first place. It looks like Stephanie. Then Tommy. Tommy going in into the Savello. Oh, oh, and Tabitha falls at the finish line, but gets up and across. It looks like Stephanie. And then Tommy. Oh, I don't know what the official results on that one was, but I'll tell you, folks, we're going to have to check that out. A fantastic finish by all of our players. Did you take a look at Stephanie and Tommy going into that event? Tommy was in first place with 700 points, and Mo was ready with the results. In first place, Stephanie in blue. In second place, Tabitha in red. In third place, Tommy in purple. Our final event, the aggro crag, 900 to 800 to 800. Our players, a whole slew of surprises as they climb up that mountain. Ledges, falling rocks, snowstorms, smoke, water. Whole slew of surprises. Let's go to Mo and check out the rules. Mo. Players will start at the sound of my whistle. Each player has an identical side of the mountain to climb and may not cross into another player's path. Now during their climb, our players must light up each of eight targets located on their side of the crag. The first player to activate all of the targets, including the final one at the peak of the mountain, will receive first place points. Mike. So the ultimate athletic challenge crystallized in this last event, the aggro crag. Whoever gets to the top of that mountain first is going to take home a piece of our rock. And this is what we're waiting for. Let me remind you that the points have skyrocketed in this event. Third place, 375 points. Second, 550. And first, 725 points. Who's going to get to the top of that crag first? They're going home with the gold medal. Mo, kick this off. Players, on your mark, get set. And so, making it up, the canyon. And going to their first actuator, there's Tabitha. There's our blue player, the purple, hitting the first actuator. Taking the turn up for the third actuator. There's red. Looks like purple's in the lead right now as the rocks come falling down on purple. Way out in front. Purple going up the final portion of the crag. Going up, it looks like purple all the way, folks. Purple in first. Who's going to be in second place? It could be the silver medal online. Who's going to be second? Look out close. Red or blue? It's red. And then blue. Oh, what a finish. That second place, the silver medal. Who is going to get that first? Let's go to Mo and check out where we stand. In first place on the aggro crag, Tommy in purple. In second place, Tabitha in red. In third place, Stephanie in blue. All right. Let's take a look at our final leaderboard standings, Mo. Here they are, Mike. In third place today with 1,275 points, Stephanie in blue. In second place, Tabitha in red with 1,350 points. Our winner today, Tommy in purple, 1,525 points. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, old man. Welcome to Legends of the Hidden Temple. The rooms are filled with lost treasures that are protected by mysterious Mayan temple guards. Only Olmec knows the legend behind each of the treasures in his temple. Which one are we going to hear about today? The legend of the secret map of the Bandit Queen. Oh, the secret map of the Bandit Queen. Well, one of our teams will have a chance to retrieve the secret map. They're going to have to pass some tough physical and mental tests. And in the end, only one team will have the right to enter Olmec's temple. But first, they have to cross that moat. And Olmec will tell us how they'll have to do it today. Before you float the remains of an ancient raft, when Kirk gives the signal, the first player will jump into the water and balance the raft, and the other player will step onto the back. 
then kick your way across the moat. Second player, remember, if you fall or touch your partner with your hands, you must both go back and start again. When you reach the other side, jump off the raft, help your partner out of the water, and run over and hit the gong. The first four teams to hit their gongs will go on to the next round. Teams, are you ready? Yeah! Mr. Olmec, are you ready? Let's rock. On your mark, get set, go! The first part, part is tough because she takes the balance. And who's going to be first, across or off? And it looks like the Blue Barracudas have done a great job backwards. What a nice technique by the Blue Barracudas and the Orange Iguanas. Silver Snake way, whoa, whoa, it falls into the water. Orange Iguanas across. We need two more teams. Who's it going to be? And yes, the Red Jaguars are up. And they've rung in. We're looking for one more team. Together with their team as the Silver Snakes are across. Now they're going to get their partner up. Being chased quickly by the Purple Parrots. It's the Silver Snakes. Going on in the steps of knowledge are the Silver Snakes. And the orange iguanas. The blue barracudas. And the red jaguars. It's now time for Olmec to tell us about that secret map of the Bandit Queen. But before we get started, pay attention because your knowledge of the legend can bring you a step closer to Olmec's temple. The Bandit Queen kept the map hidden safely away until it finally found its way to the temple. Your goal is to retrieve the secret map of the Bandit Queen and bring it back here. You're standing on the steps of knowledge. In a minute, Olmec's going to ask you a question. If you think you know the answer, I want you to stop down on the ancient marking in front of you. If you're right, you're going to go down to the next level. But if you're wrong or run out of time, I'm going to give the other teams a chance to answer. The first two teams to make it to the bottom step are going to be one step closer to Olmec's temple. Was Bell's most famous outlaw friend, John Dillinger. Silver Snakes. Jesse James. That is correct. There you go. We've got our first team right there. It's the Silver Snakes. What did Jesse James lose at Bell Star's cabin? The Red Jaguars. The map. That is correct. All right. We've got our two teams right here. Go get ready for the Temple Games, and I'm going to tell you what's going to happen here. In the Temple Games, teams are competing to win Pendants of Life. They're going to need those pendants to protect them from the dreaded temple guards as they make their way through the temple. There are three temple games. Olmec, tell us about temple game number one. When Kirk gives the signal, hook your rope onto the bag and quickly make your way out of the mine, leaving a rope trail. Once you exit, pull on the rope until you maneuver the bag out of the mine. The first player to retrieve their loot or the player that's further along in 60 seconds wins. On your marks, get set, go! Oh, look out for the boulders! And they've got the loot out! Zachary got out there and pulled the loot through. That gives Silver Snakes the half pennant of life. When Kirk gives the signal, the Bronco will start fucking. Hold on tight. If you fall off, your opponent will receive a point. Whoever has the most points at the end of 60 seconds wins. Good luck. On your mark. Get set. Go! <laughs> Who's going to fall first? The red does, so the silver gets the point. All right, let's bring them down from their horses. Come on down. She scored in the last second. That gave her one total. But the silver snakes and Miriam got five, so they get the half pennant of life. When Kirk gives the signal, climb along the wall and maneuver yourselves along the trail until you reach the hole and your partner can pass through. The first team to reach Jesse's goal, or the team that's further along in 60 seconds wins. On your marks, get set, go! Now tied one pin in a piece. We go to the tiebreaker. Let's go to the tiebreaker pedestal. Bring it in. All right. Omek, we're now ready for your final question. In return for finding his map, did Jesse offer Bell 
after his gold. Silver snake. Half of the treasure, the gold. That is correct. The silver snakes have got it correct, and they are going to the temple. You won one pendant in the temple games. Who's going first? I am. Very well, Miriam. When Kirk gives the signal, you'll race through the gates in the temple and make your way towards the secret map. Hidden inside the temple are temple guards assigned to protect three specific rooms. You can trade your pendant for an extra life and go on, but if you're caught without a pendant, you'll be taken out of the temple, and it will be Zachary's turn to enter and try his luck. If you can reach the map, all the doors of the temple will instantly unlock, and the temple guards will vanish. Return through the gates with the secret map of the Bandit Queen in three minutes, and you will both be handsomely rewarded. Let's lower the gate. Let's put three minutes on the clock. On your mark. Get set. Go! There she goes, up into the temple. Which way is she going? Into the crypt? Will she come out? Oh, get out of here. Oh, door opens and she's heading in the pit of the pendulum. There she's going to swing the rope. Nice swing. Looks back. Oh, she goes down. Doors open. Heading down, heading down, down into the tomb of the headless king. Temple guard, right when she came in, she has to give up her only pendant. Oh, nice move. She's got all the ropes down. She's looking for the skull. They're pendantless as she heads into the jester's court. Two minutes, eight seconds. There she goes, she got it. Which way she heading? Forward in the dark forest. One minute, 23 seconds. She's gonna make up a little time. Oh, oh Temple yeah. Guard, it's time for Zach. Zach, take off and move. Go, buddy, go. Doors are open! 24 seconds! Come on, Zach! 